Well, aloha and how you doing? Gordo the Tex are here. Welcome to another exciting and thrilling episode of Hibachi Talk. We have um, we have really interesting and cool guests today. So as a result of that, we're not going to do any uh, uh, cryptocurrency update. We put Angus to bed, so he's not going to be here. We've got a lot to cover in 28 short minutes. So please grab yourself a libation, pull up a chair, and sit down. And we're going to talk about medical marijuana in Hawaii. And we have we have Dr. Sisley, yes, who's sir. with us today, and um, Brian Goldstein, who's also the um, co-founder, CEO and co-founder of Manoa Botanicals. So we're really going to get into into this. But um, for, at first, my first couple of comments where there's some common threads that we actually have here, and I love this world. Um, so Dr. Sisley, your telemedicine was one of your, or still is maybe, one of yes. your big things. Yes, it is. I was very much in involved in telemedicine back in the 80s, before you were born. Oh, my I mean, God, that's I was wonderful. doing stuff back in that space. So <laughs> it was really cool. You were a real pioneer. It was, real, it was oh, a real yeah. pioneer. We did telemedicine to Guam. I mean, it was oh, really wow. kind of cool stuff. That's true. And then, uh, Brian, you've got the interesting background. I love your comment on the web about um, shocked at Coinbase being shut down in Hawaii. And I've been ranting on that for about a month. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was pretty upset about that. We were looking at potentially using cryptocurrencies as a form of payment, one of the forms of payment in our dispensary. But uh, that's not really a viable it's option. It's not a viable now. option. Well, I can talk to you about some other viable options that uh, will work in that uh, cryptocurrency yeah. space. Anyway, I'd like um, our audience to get to know who our guests are, just to get a little bit of who, your background and so on. So, Doctor, since Ladies first. Yeah. Chivalry is not dead. <laughs> right. I just took a nap. Why don't you do? give, give us a background? You got one minute. Okay, you bet. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a physician from Scottsdale, Arizona. I practice internal medicine and psychiatry, and I'm the president of a research institute in Arizona called the Scottsdale Research Institute, where we focus on conducting controlled trials, looking at cannabis as a medicine. And my role here is I'm a medical director of Manoa Botanicals, and I'm eager to start working with patients and seeing patients finally having access to, you know, to, to lab-tested quality cannabis. Yeah, and, it's, and it is, and, and it's medicine. Yes. And, and I won't hold it against you the fact that you're an Arizona football fan. I mean, I saw that. I mean, I'm a, a rainbow fan, but we'll <laughs> talk about that later. But you're also doing some stuff in the NFL side, and we want to touch on that yes, a little bit later absolutely. on what's happening in this. You Brian, you've got an interesting background, too, so give us a little background on yourself. Yeah, I spent um, most of my career in technology, about 15 years in software in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area and then about another 15 years in various technology-related businesses here in Hawaii. Um, and I have been looking at and get involved with the medical marijuana industry for about three years now. So okay. this, is, uh, this has really turned into uh, a, a very important part of my life and uh, part of my family's lives. Yeah, and, it's, and, and I think the point I want to make sure we get across, this is medicine. This is not recreational. <laughs> We're talking about medicine here and what, what happens in that space. And one of the things that I particularly like about what you have done, your organization has done, is your community outreach. I mean, so tell us a little bit about that. Like, what, what possessed you to get into this business? It is a business. Mm -hmm. Healthcare is a business. I don't care what anyone says. Healthcare is a business. We've done a bunch of shows on healthcare. Um, but it is a, it's, it's a healthcare business. But what possessed you to get into it? And then what possessed you to say, let's get to the community? So um, I was introduced to uh, cannabis as a medicine probably about six years ago by a friend in the industry. And... Um, I used it as a topical cream that helped with uh, some arthritis that I have, and I, I was shocked to discover that it worked. And when the uh, Hawaii legislature passed the dispensary law and I started to assemble the team, um, I wanted to have a very strong medical focus to mm -hmm. us as an organization as, and as a team. And as I did my research uh, in the industry, I came across uh, Dr. Sisley and her groundbreaking innovative research in um, testing uh, medical whole plant smoked can uh, can medical cannabis in the treatment of PTSD. And I grew up in Arizona. I actually went to University of Arizona for one whole year, killed my GPA, um, <laughs> but, uh, and, and reached out to Dr. Sisley, and she was actually a very early member of our team. Pre-licensed. Pre-licensed. Yes. Pre so you became exactly. part of the team pre-licensed. Yeah, and I got to see all the outreach that this team was doing. You mentioned the the community, you know, these talk story sessions they hosted where they collected meaningful patient feedback about what they wanted from the industry. And the, the, I think the key themes were that they were looking for 
you know, broad access, that they wanted to make sure that patients would actually be able to get a card for a reasonable list of diagnoses and that they would be able to get quality medicine that was, um, you know, lab tested and safe. And so I think, and, and also that it's affordable. I think that's one of the mm. things we're struggling with mm. now is that we're, we're seeing some onerous, uh, you know, regulatory uh, you know, kind of, kind of back-breaking regulations from the Department of Health in terms of the, the certification of labs. And I'm hoping that that changes soon because we, I sit on, a, on the state of Nevada lab testing commission and we've been very careful to, you know, we, we feel that patient safety is paramount, but we also are trying to find a balance to make sure that there aren't a ton of added costs that will be then put on the patient. On so. yeah, and this is not, re you know, I'm going to say this over and over again during this, during this, this is not recreational marijuana. Right. We're talking about a medicine yeah. that we want to bring in. And you focus on a number of, of areas that you want to treat. Yes. Yeah, so because there's a whole number of things, uh, opportunities out there, yeah. but you're focused. Now, what are some of the things that you're looking at? We, you know, the, the study that we're most well known for is this PTSD trial. So we're doing a randomized control trial looking at four different varieties of whole plant cannabis in military veterans that have post-traumatic stress disorder. But I can tell you that we're also examining other areas including using cannabis as a substitution therapy for opioids. Mm -hmm. um, we have so many patients that are you know, chronically opioid dependent and we really need to find a solution for them to help them get off the opioids that they're addicted to but also to maybe see if cannabis could be um, could be used as an adjunct to pay other pain management. We already have um, a, a report from the federal government. The National Academy of Science issued uh, a groundbreaking report in January talking about the fact that there's strong scientific evidence that is already published confirming that cannabis should be used as a treatment for chronic pain, for nausea and vomiting, and for multiple sclerosis. And that came from the federal government, which is, you know. Which, and we know what their position is, is yes. that all of this stuff. And, you, yeah. you're, and Brian, you've got to be up against this as, as your role, is so you've got to deal with the, the political aspects from the federal side, because, you know, even medical, correct me if I'm wrong, if, even medical marijuana is still a federal, I want to call it an offense, but it's yeah, a federal. So it um, is. Uh, marijuana, regardless of whether it's a medical, medical. or recreational state, is a Schedule One controlled substance. Okay. So the, the possession, uh, use, and sale and transport is against uh, federal, federal law. law. Um, it is legal at the state level. So we are a state licensed dispensary. We have a, a license from both the Department of Health as well as a um, a uh, scheduled uh, controlled substance permit from the Narcotics Enforcement Division from the state of Hawaii. So we have permission from the state of Hawaii to possess and sell. Well, not yet sell, uh, but as once we get our dispensary Jeez. certified, right. we will have will be um, uh, licensed to sell cannabis. So you and so so one of the things that you've been doing and and aren't we about a year behind schedule? <laughs> well, I don't know if I'd I'm say we're a year you. behind schedule, but um, I. I while it was uh, middle of 2015 that dispensaries could have legally sold cannabis, that was never a realistic timeline. Hmm. Um, my expectation was that by early summer, by now, okay. um, we would uh, dispensaries would be allowed to to sell. Um, and the holdup right now is um, certification of uh, private labs to test the okay, medical Okay, that was going to be my next that, question. That so what's the holdup at this point? Well. Um, Hawaii has some very stringent uh, regulations, and we're very concerned about patient safety, just like the state uh, Department of Health is. Um, but one of the challenges is the state public lab needs to certify the private labs, mm -hmm. and that process is taking significantly longer than um, anyone expected. And part of that is, uh, and is our understanding, is that the state is treating cannabis as a pharmaceutical. And oh. cannabis is not a pharmaceutical. It's a natural botanical whole plant medicine. So to treat it as a pharmaceutical is flawed and will uh. actually lead potentially to significantly higher costs. So, so that, and that's a that's a great point because you know it's it's the fact that it is a natural substance. It's not it's not GNA. You know, it's not modified. It's you know it's not a created substance like opioids. Exactly. And, you know this is just an, a natural thing. And I, I love this fact of the, the the opioid piece. I did a we did a healthcare segment and over prescription of opioids. And as a person who has had a number, multiple knee surgeries, 
the pay, I've still got bottles of, of, of um, pain pills. Um, pain pain pills. I, you know, the prescribed ten, I use one. Yeah. And then when you, the, that really feeds the black market in uh, in um, opioids. Yeah, mine are so, still in the cabinet. Just right. for the I need to sell them. Well, you know, um, <laughs> they're that, still that's in the challenge there. Yeah. I mean, the, we have an it. opioid epidemic. Yeah. And um, there's actually some really interesting research coming out of states that have legal cannabis programs they're seeing at the at the macro level at the state level that the rate of prescriptions of the opioids are decreasing the and pharmaceutical companies one, aren't going to like that no it, it's it's actually uh, doesn't uh, um, it doesn't look good for pharmaceutical companies uh, when they see what's happening in the states with cannabis programs so we're actually seeing in states that are looking to pass medical cannabis programs, the, the anti-movement is funded by pharmaceutical, by pharmaceutical companies. companies. I know, and I've always had issues with them advertising on TV and such. But let, let's talk about some of the myths. Sure. I mean, the myths of, 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 of medical marijuana or cannabis and such. My always comes to my mind is the 1932 movie Reefer Madness. Yeah, I mean, right. how crazy that whole thing is. <laughs> but so what are some of the myths out there that we could perhaps be able to dispel it within a, within a minute or so? I, you know, I think the biggest myth is that cannabis has no medical benefit. That was perpetuated by our own federal government by placing it in Schedule One. That's mm. defined as drugs having no medical benefit. But we all know that now that there are thousands of controlled trials published in peer-reviewed medical journals that confirm the therapeutic benefits of this plant. So, for the government to continue to insist that there's no medical benefit is really er erroneous, and it's you know it's systematically misleading the public. So, the other myth that I think is is a, a big problem is. The, the idea that cannabis is a gateway drug. There's no data oh, yeah, to support that. And in fact, we're finding more and more now that cannabis is truly an exit ramp. Instead of a gateway drug, it's an egg, it leads people off of much more addictive meds. And you can see that, as, as um, Brian mentioned, in the states where there are legal medical cannabis laws in place, we see a major drop in the prescription drug overdose rates. In the, for instance, there was an article in JAMA where they showed an average of 25% drop in opioid overdose deaths in those states that had a medical marijuana law. In so. the medical marijuana. See, so th those, are, th those are points that somehow the media doesn't bring out. Yeah, it's hard it, to, it, it's hard. to focus on. So this. why did, you know, you know this is what, well, I can, we can spend hours on this. So you've got a number of upcoming events, and I want to cover those, too, because I want to make sure that the, um, the, the community knows that they've got opportunities to come and hear you speak and so on. But before we do that, what I'm going to do is take a short one-minute break. We've got to pay the bills. Yeah, right. You know, it's just, we are a nonprofit, 501c3. <laughs> so we're going to take about a minute. We'll come back, and we're going to talk about what's going on in the community where you can come out and find out what's happening in the medical marijuana industry. watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others. And in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their <laughs> Hello, and how are you doing? This is Gardner the Tech Star. Welcome to Hibachi Talk. We are here with Dr. Cicely 
She's the medical director of Manoa Botanicals, and we're here with um, Brian Goldstein, who's the CEO and founder of Manoa Botanicals. And we're talking about medical marijuana in Hawaii, and it's going to be coming here soon. A lot of the steps are going in place. Um, but one of the things I like about these two individuals and, and, and what you're doing is your, your community outreach. Now, you've got some things coming up in the, in the near future. So can you tell us about them and who can come and, and what opportunities are there? Yeah, we're really excited to have Dr. Cicely in town this week. Um, and we have a number of events that are taking place. Uh, probably the largest event to open to the public is this evening at uh, Temple Emanuel, which is located at 2550 Poly uh, Highway, so oh, it's right yes. on the Poly. Yep. Um, and uh, we're talking about uh, medical cannabis in Hawaii. Uh, both uh, Dr. Cicely and I will be presenting. Um, Dr. Cicely will be talking about the, some of the latest research. I'll be sharing information about the program in Hawaii. Um, various qualifying conditions, how people can get a medical marijuana card. On uh, Friday evening, we have an event at the University of Hawaii Cancer Center, which we're really excited about. This is directed primarily at healthcare professionals. So any of your listeners that are uh, nurses, physicians, advanced practitioner registered nurses, medical students are invited to attend this. That's at the Sullivan Center at the Cancer Center Friday evening. And Dr. Sisley will be the speaker at that event, really targeted at a pretty somewhat technical talk on um, medical cannabis, the conditions it's used to treat, and what some of the latest uh, research is on that. And then Saturday morning, we have an event um, at uh, the Box Jelly, which oh, is awesome. uh, focused on PTSD and veterans. Yeah. Um, and uh, Dr. Sisley has some um, groundbreaking research on cannabis that uh, you know, I'd love for her to take a minute to talk about. And uh, actually that event was sold out within just a few days and we were able to increase the capacity and there's I think uh, just a few more seats left. All these events are free. Um, and they're on eventbrite.com. Oh, okay, perfect. So Eventbrite, there's three of them. So you've got the Poly, you've got the uh, Cancer Research, which is Kakaako, you've got Box Jelly, which is Kakaako as well. So you've got all three of those. Exactly. Um, parking is easy. It's one of the big things in Hawaii. Right. Parking is easy, and the price is right. It's free ninety nine. Yes. Free ninety nine. I think I encourage people to go out. My wife's a registered nurse, oh, so good. she's um, she's very much um, uh, interested in what's going on oh, in this cool. space. So tell us a little bit. So you just mentioned Brian about a little bit of the research. Mm -hmm. So you want to talk a little bit? So sure. The, okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, we we have a, an immense amount of data that supports cannabis as a medicine, and the idea is, you know, there's a number of qualifying conditions here in Hawaii. And uh, many patients may, may have never considered cannabis as a possible treatment option. So we want to really encourage the public to come to this event and, and learn more about how they might treat you know, a condition that they're struggling with. For instance, if they have, um, let's think of a... Oh, it's a chronic like a, pain. There, there you go. That's let's most, just try uh, that. significant one. Yeah, back pain. Yeah, that's right. right. If, if they have, if they've been struggling with this and they've tried a lot of conventional treatments and nothing's helped, then they can come and learn about the, the existing data. You know, there's already, already published literature that confirms that cannabis does provide pain relief, and that was, uh, again, uh, mentioned in the NAS report, the National Academy of Science, this respected federal agency, concurred that cannabis is useful in pain management. So what about prescriptions? Because this is a prescription medicine. No, well, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's, oh, it's not. Yeah, okay, it's, good. Okay, then I had something wrong. So That's right. It's only available by a, a recommendation from a physician or an advanced practice nurse. So the idea is that the physician, the, the health provider who does this would confirm that a patient has a qualifying condition. And okay. there's a list of, what, eight or ten like diagnoses. Like uh, uh, yeah, added, added, added yeah. arthritis and multiple oh, sclerosis, oh, um, well. as well as others. So That's chronic true. pain, um, epilepsy, PTSD, um, there's a, a, a whole list of conditions. And a patient actually, doctors cannot prescribe cannabis. This is they, good news. They certify they that you have a qualifying condition. Okay. And then the patient needs would go to the dispensary. And with our assistance, and uh, this is part of our core mission as a company, is okay. to provide a consultative approach okay. and help patients on their journey of discovery. Because each patient needs to go down their own journey of discovery to find what strain, what method of ingestion, what rates of titration, how much they should take, okay. whether they should 
you know, make a tea out of it, use an oil, a smoke, or vaporize, or rub it as a lotion, find the method that works for them. So that's a, so that's a great point. I love, I love this. In fact, I'm glad we do a show, and I learn stuff too. So it's not, not prescription, but there's other ways. It's not just smoked. Right. It can be an oil. It can be ingested. There's a whole number of things. I met a family whose young child who was about seven who was epilepsy, Colorado, and um, he was on um, medical marijuana, and they said it just changed their entire family life structure because he was so much better himself and then for what it helped them with their entire family unit. I mean, yeah. so it's just kind of a... It's just a very it's common the, way for people to start is if they have, for example, joint pain um, is to use a topical that they would rub on, right? I, I have a tennis elbow I use a medical cannabis cream on and I'm able to continue playing tennis. Man, I could use this for my niece. Man, that'd be <laughs> awesome. So, uh, so, so I want to digress just a little bit, but still on the research side because this is a big sports town. Yeah, especially true. football. Football is huge. Now, you've got something, a little something you're working with the NFL. Yes, right here? yeah. Right here with what's we happening? Have, yeah, we have a campaign to try to persuade the NFL to end the ban on cannabis for. You know, since its, its start, the NFL has always penalized and sanctioned players for utilizing cannabis even medicinally. And we've, we're trying to persuade them by, by showing them the science that's already been published mm. to try to explain to them that this should be allowed and utilized by players because there's a, an, an, a growing body of literature that suggests that cannabis could be involved in neuroprotection. What we mean is that, you know, brain cells that are injured over and over when, and during the course of an entire professional career in football, they may have, you know, thousands of head injuries. And each time they get a concussion, they develop this inflammatory process mm -hmm. that, caught, that often results long-term in what we call CTE, or chronic traumatic encephalopathy. And many of these players have learned that cannabis could protect their brains from those kind of long-term injuries. And there are, many of the players are already using cannabis throughout their year. But the problem is once a year, the NFL tests for cannabis. <laughs> they do the drug test. Yes. It sits in your body for a certain period that's of time. That's right. So, that's, so we, we have did, I mean, the, the US government has a patent on cannabis for neuroprotection. So they've already, the federal government has already admitted that there is literature that confirms that cannabis is useful for this, but but they still won't allow the you know the, it to be federal because of this whatever ancient stigmatism that put it. So my grandson played football for 14 years. And oh, he played for the University. Of he was a lineman, and he's okay. been beat up, oh, I beat up, beat up. Yeah. And concussions we can't even begin to count. Yes. And I played in the CFL, and I got beat up. It yeah. explains why I have no hair in my head. But you know, this, there's so if there's an option, an option or an opportunity here where they're not off taking you know massive doses of opioids yes. or whatever yeah. to kill the pain. This, this is a natural, it's a natural. It's a plant-based medicine yeah. that uh, there's a growing body of evidence to support that it provides uh, neural protection. Um, and uh, there's, it's, it's stunning what uh, some of this, these studies are coming out and suggesting is if, if this turns out that, uh, that what these indications are true, then not only should the NFL allow players, but they should provide yeah. medical cannabis, yes. say, in capsule form, yeah. without any psychoactive, but so you, you, can, you can ingest cannabis that has no psychoactive effect, so it doesn't get you high. Yeah, right? that's a good so point. So the NFL should not just be allowing their players, they should be providing yeah. it to the players. Possibly. That's what they should be. Yeah, yeah. And, and the NCAA, and, you know, and not just football, there's all the yeah. other... All the know, leagues, yeah, NBA, sport bands. The, the military. Yeah. yeah, the military. I mean, you just, you just go down the list, and like you said, it's, that's a great point, is that the misconception is that every time you take medical cannabis, it's hallucinogenic, no. and it's not. No, it's not. Yeah. There, every time you rub it on your elbow, you get a little buzz. No, I don't think so. <laughs> not at all. No. Um, I use a tincture for uh, some lower back pain that has, it's a 20 to 1 CBD to THC, so it's got 20 parts CBD to one part THC. So I take a dropper full of that, my pain goes away, and I feel nothing. There's no psychoactive effect. The, the amount of THC is so, it's a microdose. You don't feel it. So, so, so how is the medical marijuana industry being perceived in Hawaii now? I mean, it's been discussed a lot. It's in the news a lot. I mean, you know, um, uh, we're obviously not distributing it yet, but um, um, how is it perceived now since you've been doing this for, what, three years? Yeah, there's just a great deal of public interest in it, and especially even in the early in the process, pre-license, when I was approaching people 
to solicit their assistance to become part of the team. And frequently, you would think that people are going to be, oh, no, marijuana. But I, I can't tell you how many times I was surprised to find out the reaction was, oh, my God, my dad used it before he died. It helped him so much. My mother pain. used it before she passed away. Well, there you go. Yeah. This is a long, a long time, time ago. ago. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it, amazing. It's, 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 people it's, are so hungry for information. Yeah. And it's proof that when we offered these sessions, they filled up immediately because people are desperate to find out, you know, to really get objective information about how does cannabis work and how to sign up. And I think that's, I'm not sure if you went over how the patients... Well, yeah, I mean, so uh, there are most, um, uh, all of the, uh, the health uh, healthcare systems here, like Kapilani, Queens, Kaiser, um, they, they don't allow their doctors to certify patients. So you need to go to either an independent doctor who does not work for one of these hospitals oh, interesting. or a cannabis clinic um, that specialize in uh, seeing patients and determining if they have a qualifying condition. And um, if your doctor doesn't certify patients, then just send an email to us at info at manoabotanicals.com. We have a list of doctors, um, advanced practitioner, registered nurses, uh, that will uh, see patients and determine if you have a qualifying condition. If you do, you'll get your medical marijuana card in about seven to ten days. Seven to ten days. Now, the thing is not covered by your um, insurance provider. No, no insurance. No insurance to provide because they've got federal, uh, you know, federal pressures on them. I would believe. Right, it, right. If it's not covered by Medicare, then insurance doesn't pay doesn't for doesn't it. pay for it. So, so they, you have to come up with ways to be able to get this funded. Are, are there nonprofits out there that are getting established to help fund? These kinds of things. Well, actually, that's why the that outputs, outputs. Uh, at, at, in our pre-licensed um, talk story outreach sessions, this is one of the things that we took away was patients' concerns about affordability. So we developed a uh, compassionate care plan called the Pulama plan that will provide financial assistance to patients who have a demonstrated need. Okay, perfect. So get, guess what? We're running out of time. What's the website? I know it's... Uh, it's manoabotanicals.com. Right. right now it's just a coming soon web page, yeah. uh, but our uh, full website will be coming out in uh, about uh, two months. Okay, and I've, I've been on there and, and submitted a question, I think, or so. Anyway, we give all of our guests this autographed solo cup. So this is 125, the 125th show, A and B. Don't lose this. It's worth at least a penny and a half. Or no bit, a millionth of a Bitcoin. Anyway, we want to thank everybody for joining us today. It's been, I think it's a great show. So check out the website. Check out this um, show when it gets released. And like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. How you doing? <laughs>